Alright. <laughs> right, let's continue. Um, because we don't probably don't have too much time, I guess. Um, anyone who is contacting anyone who's watching on the stream will find that the stream is currently occupied by Simon this game. Um, specialization course, so at master's level. So what I'm doing instead, what I'm doing instead is uh, recording that session and uploading it afterwards. So you can still review it and I'll, uh, you know, write some posts to it, but I haven't had a time. Yet. If he, after the break, has stopped recording, then I'll probably just stream directly there, uh, just as um, uh, for you guys. Um, feel free to switch on the monitor. It's basically just a matter of clicking the button on the back twice, and then it should blink erratically and a few seconds later should actually start showing stuff. Cool. Um, sweet. All right. So what did we talk about yesterday? For all the one that, yep. Mocking a server uh, so that you could test from a client's perspective uh, onto your application. Yeah. OK. Yep. Cool. And what are the two mechanisms that we talked about specifically there? Because we talked about testing, or Marge talked about testing before. Yep. Uh, making the uh, function that uh, calls the after uh, server that you do not have control of, uh, making that a function pointer so that yep. you can replace it with a different function that does something uh, locally instead. Yeah. Uh, cool. The other method was to make an entire server basically in uh, Go. Yeah. And Yes, exactly, right? So HTTP test uh, package uh, for you guys. That's something you can explore. Um, cool, <coughs> right. So, um, well, the other way, what, what's, what's, what are we, what is still outstanding? What didn't we test yet, really? Uh, testing from a service perspective onto your application to mm. see if uh, it responds to it your uh, error messages and such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the uh, testing for the for the um, error case, right? So if validation is done correctly, that's one of the aspects. That's more like a semantic problem that you actually do proper error checking on your server implementation, for example. What's the other aspect that we didn't really test for, what's worthwhile testing for, or possibly interesting? We, I think we started discussing that at the very end, briefly. So we had, uh, you know, uh, ill-fated data that needs to be validated. But I think the other aspect was also to think about uh, invocation, um, invocation order, right? Uh, frequency of invocation, which may be an issue uh, in terms of, uh, you know, server load and, you know, hitting some limits, but may just be a matter of inefficiency, but you may simply not spot it um, if, you, um, if, if you don't work, only validate from the client side. So we wanted to validate in, uh, from the work server side as well. And uh, what we yesterday, um, uh, uh, well, wrote about pretty, pretty much is um, what would be considered a stub, I guess. So basically, a you know, dumb server, uh, HTTP test server in this particular case, that would blindly resp respond to any request, right? So we had a very fixed implementation. There was no, no real magic associated with that one. So just bring it up briefly for uh, sake of um, recovering what we did. Hang on. So I hope that's legible. Yep. Uh, I hadn't put the link in yet. That's right. So, I, but I put it all together um, today because I ch still changed the slides yesterday as well. Um, so you will get all the links to all the videos uh, of yesterday and today. So the you know the session before the break, after the break, and today's session one kind of pack. I think um, that uh, was my intent. Um, I I will do that after the session. Um, or um, yeah. So. Um, this was the function we basically um, wrote for substitution, and then we changed it and wrote this kind of HTTP test server, um, yeah, handler in a wider sense, handler function. So that's the kind of thing. But this is really rather, let's say, a part of, kind of a stupid function, right? So the only thing that it does is actually respond to whatever request comes, 
it's not particularly uh, sensitive to the input and doesn't do any further checks. So it's really just to ensure, okay, communication works well, we send something, we get something. Sure, you could put a bit more conditionals in there, for example, if you have uh, um, uh, deal with different cases and so on, but again, it would be hard-coded. It wouldn't be really a generic way of dealing with this. Um, on the other hand, you also notice that you actually still write quite a bit of code, right? Even you're thinking, okay, well, we just, you know, need to have a dummy server that allows us to test client-side uh, requests and so on, uh, and uh, fire them back or respond to them accordingly. We'll find that it's actually quite verbose. We still like 10, 12 lines of code, uh, even though we have an inline specification of the handler function. Um, so we can make that a bit more, uh, we should probably find a way of making that a bit more um, concise. And so moving away from this idea of just having this blind, uh, you know, uh, state conversion, like uh, they're taking some input, doing something to it and responding to it, I want to have a bit more rich functionality. And uh, mocking is precisely about this. In fact, everything we talked about up to now wasn't really mocking. It was really more stubbing. But it's the uh, next iterative step to think about how do we uh, think about uh, a mock. And the key idea here is basically that we have a, you know, a skeleton of the functionality, like an interface in particular, and emulate its behavior. So that's that's how far we got. But also, um, we want to specify some expectations of how it's invoked. Um, we get to that in a second. And obviously testing it then. So um, if you, you guys, I think I um, found this on the net, uh, admittedly, and I felt this may be quite accessible to you with your uh, initial programming background C++. <laughs> but for example, if you provide, um, the idea is if you provide the mocking inter frameworks, your you know header files, basically the interfaces of the functionality you want to uh, provide, it will basically, um, you know, um, encode behavior against that one. Um, that is obviously not the real, um, uh, th th reflects the semantics that you uh, intend, but it actually is not the real implementation that you're looking for. So the mocking framework will basically fill those gaps and uh, come up with an executable um, version of that very interface. The key purpose of this one is really to deal with um, complex systems uh, in a sense that they are multi-layered. So again, I just, draw that up for the sake of um, clarity. So if you have a multi-layered system, again, we have a client that invokes something, let's say um, Postman style kind of invocation, and then we have a system that it actually uh, that could be a service that provides functionality to that um, REST client, if you like, and in itself may invoke one or more additional uh, services. So the system quickly gains in complexity, and um, well, the obvious challenge is how do you test the uh, you know elements in isolation, right? So it's really about how to write effective unit tests in the widest sense. So not so much integration tests where you test the system, a subset of the system or system as a whole, but rather looking at the individual units and their interaction. So that's the key idea here. Um, and this is precisely what a mock is doing. It's basically just um, intercepting invocations of next um, you know additional services, the layered services, and providing some sort of response. How do we get from um, stub to mock? Well, we need to obviously um, they have a bit more richer functionality, but also put more test evaluation into the mocks themselves. We'll see that in a second how that works. So it's really about isolation of system components if you build bigger systems. Um, for the purpose of your assignment, it could be quite purposeful to have mocks, but I think you can get around it without it. So just by writing stops, you'll probably be fine. Um, but um, it's obviously a bit of a richer experience. I would recommend definitely to uh, try it out if you have an opportunity, um, you know, just to see um, how, how mocking actually works. Something we could do tonight, for example, in the lab. So um, yeah, I'll leave that fairly open-ended, what we're doing tonight. But um, um, I think a good opportunity would be just to try out how does mocking actually work. So again, um, well, what's the stuff? It simply emulates the uh, response of a production system given a given input, right? So it's kind of a stupid cooperator. So whatever you specify, it will return. It's hard codes the um, response behavior. So there's you know generally limited logic. Uh, you may have few cases you may test for, but generally you won't want to do a re-implementation of your entire system, which is kind of would somewhat defeat the purpose. And the key thing here is that the tests that you're writing, uh, using the testing framework, for example, concentrate on testing state, right? Given a given input, 
I expect to give an output, check the output, if it's okay, well, test passed or not, right? So it's uh, how we did it uh, as of now mostly. Mostly you use some, uh, you know, a JSON construct and just check if the string is the same you know, when, when you pass it to the system as you, um, when, when you get uh, it returned, for example. So uh, advantages, obviously, well, it only requires you as competent coders because you're building, pretty much building it from scratch anyway, right? So you're building the expected behavior. That's kind of good um, because the only thing you need is your testing framework and that's usually provided by the uh, language of choice nowadays anyway, so especially in Go. Um, so you don't need to have additional libraries. And again, additional libraries are kind of a burden, right? They're a liability and depending where you deploy your system, you may not have the freedom to uh, download or um, you know, um, yeah, install additional libraries. So you may need to rely on the core functionality that's provided out of the box. So in this case, that may be the way to go. But if you're looking at uh, mocks, then the situation is kind of a bit the other way around. So instead of, um, even though um, tests or interaction is still initiated by a client, the client inter uh, in injects some functionality into the server, the server does actually um, the tests, right? The server is actually interested in doing uh, the testing behavior uh, of the client. So it's kind of the other way around. Um, for example, uh, it checks for uh, invocations. So the server side here, if we again bring it back to the this drawing here, in this case, this server, well, depending what you what you test for, you, let's let's assume you're testing a client invocation from here. So that's some sort of uh, REST client like Postman and so on. Um, and you're testing invocation, so you're uh, uh, testing which. Um, uh, method has been used, for example, where it has been invoked, and you're generally testing for quantity, possibly order of uh, invocation, uh, and what was the third one? Um, well, obviously the, the, the arguments and whatever is passed along, so content in the widest sense. So you can do still do state testing, but in addition to that one, you also look at you know how often has something been invoked and what's the dependency, the order. Why is that sometimes relevant? Any <coughs> ideas? Why do I need to think about this? Why don't just, you know, I have a given input, I expect a given output, that's it, that's all I need. Why do I sometimes need to check for order? I mean, we talked about quantity briefly, right? So what the intuition there is basically you want to uh, test for, uh, you know, for example, uh, unnecessary invocation of the target system and things like that. That makes sense. But why order? <coughs> well, um, hang on, no? So um, sometimes, especially if you build more rather complex systems that uh, possibly even work asynchronously, um, that would be in the harder case, that's uh, way harder to test. We're not going down that route run for now, at least. Um, for example, think about, um, let's pitch a web application, let's say a, um, um, yeah, shopping application, shopping website. So, and um, you frequently getting invocation with empty orders, right? So the orders are always empty and you wouldn't expect that kind of behavior. Um, so on the one hand, you could say, well, you know, you should actually carefully check on the client side that you implement the behavior accordingly. So for example, you only allow the server side invocation once the shopping bag is a shopping order is actually, um, you know, um, not empty, right? Once, once you actually have items ad added to a given shopping order, for example, Amazon buying books, or adding books to your cart, right? But however, sometimes you may not be have, might, you may not have the luxury to actually control the client too much because it may be written by someone else. Again, that's our issue with cloud computing. We generally just provide services and you guys need to live whatever we do with to our, your system in a kind of uh, sense, right? So you don't really control the entire piece. Sometimes you only control part of it. Um, or um, and it's maybe sometimes hard to figure that out because if you do the testing by hand, let's say you have a web application, you open it up, 
and uh, you're trying that behavior out, uh, it may uh, not really result in the same kind of problem, but it may turn out that, for example, the uh, user may have clicked, I'm just making up something, the user may have uh, clicked uh, submit or check out in the shopping cart, but at this stage, the items haven't been properly attached to the order, for example. So the order appears empty, and that may actually come back to the um, items not being properly uh, retrieved from the server service. Uh, from a, you know, for example, from initial, initially the service provides the items that the user can pick from, and if this request hasn't been successfully completed, then it may result in an empty order request uh, being sent to the server. So, you know, for example, um, things like that. So anything where order matters, or you want to retrieve items from a database, but you haven't previously added them, so you want to check for that case first. Yeah. So this would be one of those um, uh, issues as well. Um, it, it's Im especially important if you, again, if you can't really control the clients. So then it would be relevant to think about how the server deals with this um, on, on the server side and to ensure that the um, invocation order is correct. We can just try that out and see if we can redevelop some sort of dependencies uh, with that complexity. The other thing you can also check, for example, if there's, multi again, multiple invocations. That's an aspect to be um, considered as well. In any case, if you do that, you can either code it yourself, so the checks on the server side, obviously, which is kind of a bit more complicated, I guess, um, or you use a framework. So in 90% of the cases, you'll be using framework. There's frameworks for C++, C Sharp, Java, and yeah, Go as well, apparently. Um, and the key thing is here, you're really not so much testing state only. The key is that you're actually testing behavior or interaction. So it's uh, the next step in testing, um, that you're actually moving away from just looking at state, but uh, looking at behavior. Cool. All right, so uh, how do we do that? Um, so generally, when you write tests, and you pretty much do that already in your, uh, in your current um, you know, um, coding practice, I guess, when you write tests, especially for the last assignment, you tend to uh, set up the environment first, right? So you bring up the environment uh, that you want to um, test in, which is particularly important if you have a controlled subset of those services, right? So you, for example, bring up the HTTP test server first, as we did last session, and then you uh, do the desired functionality, and ultimately you check for the evaluation, so you execute some sort of assertions um, that basically just explore the results. And that can be behavior or state, and so on. We get into that. So um, the um, framework that um, I think is probably the most reasonable one to use, there are multiple there, so out there, especially since Go is relatively young, the community is still quite agile in producing new um, solutions. Um, but GoMock seems to be a very promising one, has been, um, um, has received quite a lot of updates, um, and, but it slowly becomes more and more stable. And the only thing you need to do is basically install those two packages, GoMock and MockGen. Um, GoMock is the core framework that is actually used to um, test, um, allow you to specify expectations um, that you have about invocations of services, whereas MockGen um, is for actually generating the mock from the command line. So that's a bit of a tedious bit there. You actually need to uh, have some sort of command line interaction, uh, something we get to in a second. So the only thing that you need to do is actually think about your system. So we're leaving the client unchanged, right? That's something you want to test, possibly. The only thing you need to actually model, um, especially if you don't care about the core uh, functionality at this stage, it's really just about the interface of the server, the, the way the server inter uh, interacts with the client and the entry points that are made available from the server side. So you just write an interface, literally. Um, and that's what we are going to, going to do um, now in a second. So once you have this interface, you um, execute this mockgen command here. So it basically creates a, um, well, implementation. So mocked implementation of that interface. Uh, in this case, for example, would be called uh, mockgen.go. Um, so the source here, the interface being the mock object, and uh, this being the um, uh, generated mock. So once you have that one, you can actually start writing your test. So it would uh, imply that you need to initialize the controller, um, then inject the controller into the mocked interface. You get the, into that into a second, because basically it means that the controller instance then basically listens for all those invocations here of the different uh, methods you may have. You know, for example, uh, maybe uh, a get functionality here. There may be a 
put or add or whatever, uh, any sort of interface. So it does, it's not restricted to web services right now. We just do it for a normal, regular Go um, um, object in a second. Um, so basically, the mock, uh, the mock controller just monitors the um, invocations there and then sees if it corresponds to the expectations that you actually have, right? So that's the reason why you need to declare expectations. And then you just run the test, basically. So it's integrated with your test framework. But in addition to that one, it requires um, the evaluation using this mock. Um, cool. So let's try it on practice. I think that's more helpful. Um, so we, go, we make it quite straightforward for now. So just to uh, show the, 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 um, the intuition behind it. Um, uh, yeah, I make it make an object for now. So quite straightforward. So and we just need to um, we just need to specify an uh, an interface. Hang on, I need to bring up the command line. Need that eventually. Class. Uh, Good. Cool. So um, let's for for the purpose of simplicity, let's just think about a uh, database service as an intuition here, because it fits quite well with the metaphor um, of. Uh, Marish talks. He was talking about the student uh, database, uh, you know, the persistence interface there, and it's generally something along the lines of that. So you have some sort of um, function to initiate um, something, right? So you initiate uh, um, the, the, the service or whatever else. You may insert something, string. You get an error or not. If things go will go sideways, uh, you get something. Also, you need to have a parameter, most likely, uh, do a count, or whatever else. So it's really, really, uh, doesn't really technically really matter what we do right now, as long as you get the interface right, right? So we're assuming you have a mechanism to initialize something, you can insert something, get something, count something. That's all we need. So that's the idea, that's the interface. So this describes the server side of things right now. And um, we obviously want to write the client invocation for that um, as well. So it's the idea. So if we have a Um, yeah, let's just call it invoke, and we take a um, the blop, the database service instance as a parameter, and then we would do something like db. What do we do? Init db insert some item right so we basically would be able to interact with this and call all the possible methods so that would be the client side of uh, uh, interaction which we control later we come back to that in a sec so that's all uh, we need from this uh, right now so at the next step coming back to this just bring it up briefly we'll uh, need to generate so we specified an interface so which basically just needs to correspond to whatever I have on the server side um, but our services rather, are generally rather straightforward because we usually only do um, have a, a single invocation path for the servers and they are except mul multiple methods. So it's a bit richer to use actually objects to highlight the um, beauty of interfaces. And um, so we need to generate the mock as a next step. So that command is uh, in order. I, uh, the th uh, first thing I need to do is actually install the packages. I didn't do that yet. Hang on. Go get... Go get github.com. Again, all that those commands are on the slide set in case you want to replicate this um, on your own. Uh, go mock. Go. So that's number one. Get. Generator. So cool, so the packages should be installed now. So now we should have mock again at our avail. Let's see, yep, looks good. Good, so um, 
the idea is basically um, that this mock generator just looks at the interface that it finds in a given file. So you need to specify the, the source file using the parameter source, uh, the flex source, in fact, and um, it will just um, yeah provide produce an implementation that uh, allows it to inject its own controller, so it can monitor in how far those methods or functions are actually invoked. So um, that's the key idea here. Um, so let's do that. So source. We just built the um, file mock object. Go. So in case you can't read it, I'm just typing mod gang uh, space dash source mock object. Um, do we need to specify the package? Let's keep it in the main package for sake on, of um, operation. And the, you need to specify the destination, which would be the output file. Um, I object again go okay that worked like that cool so in addition to uh, mock uh, the original mock object now we have mock object again so let's look at this thing this has been generated by uh, mock gen so that's not something you should ever edit uh, but something you can inspect in fact if you were to change your object let's say you're changing your interface here by introducing a new functionality you would need to um, I don't know you would need to rerun um, the mock gen command in order to regenerate it but we probably should have a look um, what's actually happening happening here so it uses reflection meaning it inspects the actual uh, interface and its characteristics types and so on and to create this um, this 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 uh, yeah mock controller as it's as it's uh, called, <coughs> and the idea is um, you have a prefixed mock DB service, and the only um, field that actually holds is the mock controller. So that will um, basically be used to to um, you know uh, get insight into the invocations, and what is what they refer to as a mock recorder. Basically, it keeps track of the past invocation, so you can do an analysis later. Um, of uh, what has happened so that's how you instantiate it you create a new service and those are um, is, are then bound to the mock controller that you instantiate as part of your test environment and then you have a method called expect we get into that in a second so this allows us to actually uh, specify the expected invocations and you see and that's where, where it's getting uh, relevant to see what the inner workings do you see the method in um, um, methods that we actually specified before as part of the interface here for example in it the next one being insert and so on and it reflects the signature that we have seen before um, <coughs> but what it internally does any of those calls are just redirected to the um, you know to the to the uh, recorder basically so to the mock recorder so it actually just keeps track how many invocations have happened here for example right <laughs> And it does it for pretty much any of those methods. It also keeps track of content, uh, uh, co sorry, um, content for example, right? In this case, uh, the argument zero here is captured, so you can also test for uh, content. So again, for all the methods, all the same thing. If they have parameters, it captures content, otherwise just invocation and so on, right? It's cool. And if we now want to update this one because we just added the uh, delete all functionality, that's basically what we need to do. We just rerun this thing quite straightforward. Okay, cool. So let's get to tests. Uh, hang on, that's the wrong one. We want to get back here. So. Cool, as usual, um, we write our test environment. Um, so what do we need? Name. test um, we probably test invoke you saw it, it suggested already some uh, some methods um, so if the testing framework the first thing we need to do is to um, instantiate the mock controller so the go mock library should be found now yep that looks pretty good and go mock new controller Hang on, where is it new controller there you go and we need to inject the reference to the test. So the testing framework actually keep, um, is, is um, linked to the uh, mock. So cool, mock controller. 
as of now we don't have um, much that we do um, to evaluate the results because um, we're creating the smog we have the invocations running and at some stage we obviously need to evaluate if uh, you know um, the interface has been invoked with the right number of requests and the right order and so on. So that's an evaluation that is not done really at runtime during the invocation, but rather at the end. So we need to defer the evaluation, and that's done using uh, mock control dot finish. So that's again executed uh, at the end of this uh, this function. Cool. Um, right now we need to create an instance of the actual mock. Um, so in our case, that would be new mock DB service because that corresponds to the interface um, that we uh, specified. It's called DB service, and it's always prefixed with new mock uh, and then something. We inject the mock controller that we created just now. See if that consumes it. Yes, no, perhaps. Not today. Well, that seems to work. What's the issue here? Can I use type controller? <laughs> New controller, we pass testing to it. That's go mock. Okay, and it returns. Is it informing the wrong go mock? That is right. <laughs> Spot on. Exactly. That shouldn't be importing this stuff. Whatever that, wherever that is coming from. Um, it basically looks through my entire system, probably found another old um, reference to that one. Um, it's in Go line. Thank you very much. That's the right one. Q. Thank you. So, um, so now we need to uh, deal with the mock. So now it's our task to basically specify the expectation. So after we're having the interface, we generated the mock, and now we need to say what we actually want. And here it's where, where it's getting interesting. So let's, for example, assume that we want to have a call to init, and we want this call to happen exactly uh, once. So we can so indicate so mock expect then the init um, invocation we want to have once. And cool. And then we extend this and do that for pretty much all the methods we are interesting in interested in. For example, insert. We assume that the insert would be um, some item, and again we expect invocation. Well, let's say twice, right? So, so you can do that kind of stuff um, for all the different uh, methods. So, relatively straightforward because the complete interface should be found here, and count is any times. So, sweet. Cool. So that's basically it. We specified the expectation for the mock. Now we need to invoke the uh, client, right? So again, recall where is the uh, mock object there? Here. Here's a function that's just called invoke, and um, we basically, yeah, just want want it to interact with the with the um, service. So let's do that. So we call invoke the B service, and now we're injecting the mock because the mock has an identical uh, invoke test. Because the uh, mock has the identi identical interface to um, the server interface that it's interacting with, so therefore it will um, accept it as a um, as, as as an input object. So, cool. Let's run this thing and see what's happening. I add echo sideways. So that's um, okay. So let's let's have a look at the arrows down here. So again, I relatively blindly specified everything. So an unexpected call to mock to, uh, mock DB service insert this one here, add so and so expected. So it got some item, but it was expecting some item. So uh, issue of uh, capitalization here, for example. So if we fix that one and rerun it again. Cool. Um, bum, 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 bum. So it's expected two invocations. So now we find a missing call to m uh, main mockdb service insert. So um, so whereas the content seems to be okay, but there was a missing call. It expected more calls. So um, learning this uh, mocking the response for mocking framework takes a bit of time, uh, but it's actually reasonably intuitive. I'd like to be it to be a bit more explicit about the issue sometimes. But it actually is kind of clear what it what it means because we specified two invocations, 
and only got one basically. So if we add a new one here, an additional one, uh, this constraint is satisfied as well. And now the test even passes. So we have all complete. Um, cool. No, it's no magic there. So um, cool. That's relatively straightforward. So um, of course we can we could do unexpected invocations. So um, the system should not be. Ah, there you go. Actually, it, it, it picked it up. Cool. Uh, right. We rebuilt the interface. That's right. So. Um, so it has an unexpected call to delete all, right? So something we didn't specify. So you can also test for, um, so you, your, expli um, your specification is explicit. So you wouldn't want to have a subset of the invocation or superset or even more invocations than you actually specified uh, in your system. So this way you can actually quite neatly specify behavior. Um, cool, something that we didn't explore at this stage. Let's, let's make it a bit richer, see what we can specified as well. We had another get. Um, allow any invocation. So um, well, something we didn't look at yet was the <coughs> idea that we want to, hang on, um, keep track of order of invocation. So the only way of doing this one is actually looking at the um, return type. Any of those <laughs> You have this DSL here, basically, uh, a domain-specific language that allows you to chain those um, specifications quite conveniently. For example, uh, after times, you could, um, you could alternatively specify a range of times, for example, maximum invocation um, um, times and minimal ones and so on. But uh, something that's uh, more powerful is the ability to actually keep references to calls. So if we now store or instantiate a reference um, or keep yeah keep reference with that first call we can now use that in a subsequent calls to actually indicate um, that we want to have a particular call order so in this case we indicate that we want insert only to be invoked after init right so we we make the dependencies quite explicit and we can obviously do that here as well so we basically just assign the response and say that it um, should be in that very order. So, do that here as well. Cool, and then we invoke uh, the mock. Hang on, I forgot to keep the reference here. So, that will probably fail um, considerably. Let's look at the output. Oftentimes, it's more about interpreting the output than actually looking at the input. Ah, yeah. Um, delete doesn't have. That has an invocation but didn't expect one. Hang on. Um, hang on. Unexpected call. Yeah, right. We still need to. Expect. Delete all. Uh, whatever. Any times. So that kind of worked. It's a bit surprising. Let's see if I got it right. So in it, we have insert two times, delete all. It didn't capture, ah, any times. It could be zero times. And there are also any times. So if we want to enforce a call, we can have a minimum minimum times of one invocation for the call in a particular order. And now it should fail because it's basically missing a call to count here. So in this case, we need to invoke that as well. So um, yeah, so basically that's the whole the whole story here. So um, it's kind of relatively straightforward, right? Thoughts, questions? Okay, makes sense, right? So um, so this is really the bare minimum approach where you obviously rely on a framework, and yeah, arguably your responses are not that rich. Um, but the only thing you're really checking is is there some invocation or not? But the tests to write that are quite straightforward. So you would use them complementarity, uh, complementary with other tests that you um, have in mind there. Um, cool. Um, yes. So you can obviously use that in your 
hang on let's try that here in the HTTP environment there that said we have a bit of a um, disadvantage uh, here and the reason is because I was um, exploring the idea a bit if we could mock the entire handler function here any ideas of that would work or not so could we just mock the entire handler function Recall, that's what we wrote yesterday. It's basically spinning up an HTTP test server uh, on a given port, whatever, so it will provide the system with that. And then we had some dummy response. Now the question is, instead of writing actual response, sending state back to the client, can we remodel this one as a mock so we're just uh, testing for the invocation by the client? Any thoughts? Or if anyone is totally lost, uh, it's fine as well. I mean... Yes, please. Yep. I'm thinking no, because the mock code doesn't have any functionality. Or yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good. That's uh, number one. Yeah. What else? Yep. That's, that's right. That's, uh, that's right. So mocking code uh, itself doesn't really provide any meaningful functionality. That said, you could simply not respond to the client. Mm. It really depends how the client reacts to it, I guess. Right. But you're right. So it's a, it's it's a very a uh, contrived way of dealing with this, That's, but we deal with this as well, yeah? What's the other aspect? That's an issue. Look at the function characteristics, or rather the signature. What's, what's, um, what's particular about the handler function? That's the request pointer. Exactly. So what's the problem with that? It doesn't exist. So wh what does it mean for us? Test when it doesn't exist. Exactly. We won't know what the request pointer will be, right? So we can't test for something we don't know about because it's generated at runtime, right? So. Well, uh, can we mock up one and like not have a pointer one, but or we could make a pointer to one that we just locally created? That would be a possible option. Yeah, but it would mean we need to rebuild the entire request interface, right? Yes. Let's see how that looks like. Side. You would at least need all the functions that you're going to be using. Um, yeah. Yeah, but um, I wonder because uh, it's injected via the handler function here. And this may fail if you don't have a complete representation of the interface. Right? It's, yeah. it's input to the handler function. So it depends how, how I mean, what, what's the functionality they test for. That's probably decisive. We'll only use, this, would use only a subset of that, right? But let's look at the request for the sake of it because I really like the idea. Um, go dog, uh, HTTP request. On, I'll bring that up in a second once I. Yeah, it turns it turns out a bit of a bit of a pain. Ah, we have a response. We need to have a reference to as well then. Connection state. Yeah. Um, so, put it this way. I mean, that is the possible <coughs> option to think about uh, doing this. But I suspect you probably end up uh, modeling a lot of dependencies of the request uh, uh, type as well. So it's probably a bit beyond. So, but I think those those two points are right. We don't know about the request input. <coughs> And we don't really want to rewrite the system. We want to rewrite our functionality, I think, mostly. And the other thing is we don't have meaningful feedback, right? It's not helpful either. So um, so what can we do? So perhaps we can um, just use that as a starting point to um, rewrite some things of it, not the entire thing. How do I call it? Mock. Um, but what could we do? Um, you, where would that function be invoked? By the client on runtime? Yeah, okay, that, we could do this, yeah. But then we bypass the networking bit again, right? Yeah. So then we do basically the same that we did, uh, hang on, focus here. 
then we'll do the same what we did up here, right? So which we can do. Yep, you're right. So we could substitute the uh, uh, um, the reference in the first place, the whole function pointer, and just redirect everything to that future mock or whatever it would be. Yep. <coughs> What's an alternative? Quite straightforward one, the simplest one you could think about. Well, basically, just embed it in the code in here. So we leave the handler function as it is. We specify a new one. But instead of all that juice here, we, we actually um, inject the mock down here. So let's see if we can rewrite this one here. Um, probably to break quite a bit of it. Um, what's the easiest way? Um, we need to have a response writer reference. Okay, so first we need to have an interface. Um, there you go. HTTP mock object. Go. Um, so what are we dealing with? What are the return? Let's assume we want to inject a um, string for the sake of simplicity. It's probably easier to do that. Um, let me just think or see it this way. Hang on. Anyway, we need to write a new server there. Um, HTTP, that's the object. So the object needs to have some sort of let's call it for the sake of simplicity type uh, server. We need to again make an interface, so it's essential. That's the only thing that the mock game looks for, is as long as you have an interface um, specification. That's the only thing that matters. If you have additional functions in there, they will not, uh, not be considered. So, cool. And um, we want to take an input as a, a string, so something is sent to the server. Let's um, perhaps model the client invocations first. That would probably make it easier. Um, if we think about <coughs> type. Funk invoke, and we pass a server reference there. Um, oh, in fact, we don't. We want to run it as a server, so we wouldn't actually need to. We just say invoke, uh, no return, and um, we'll eventually, hopefully, get some sort of reference to the um, URL we want to post to. So we need to get the URL. So we probably need to have the URL here. Hang on, which class does sit ul in? Um, ul uh, http golang. Ah, the net ul package. Cool. Net. Mm -hmm. 
this one really ah it's just using it as a Okay, so we have a URL as input, I'll fix that in a second. Um, then we probably want to post something, and again it will be, uh, what do we need? Uh, post expects a content type, content type is uh, application JSON for us usually, or just a string basically. Not push it too far. Um, I will just take input from a buffer um, buffer string. New buffer string. That's the one. Takes a string as input. Some content, and that's basically it. So that's what we want to invoke. So we want to have some URL that we send some text to, and that's basically uh, it. So and this is the interface we can deal with. So we need to expect some text input and we need to return uh, something. Um, in the context of our system that would be, hang on, a uh, response writer because that's the way we interact with the client and potentially an error. So cool. let's use those ones. And let's use it to HTTP test <coughs> mock mock gen dash source um, ah, equals yeah equals mock ah, HTTP mock objects mock objects dot go uh, package unchanged I think that shouldn't matter and then destination. Because HTTP mock object again dot go cool. so quite straightforward. So we again we have the mock server. Uh, we can inject a mock controller into the server, and we have the expect methods uh, here, and have an interface for requests. Good. Okay. Sounds good. So now we basically can just write a uh, blob. Um, that's the object. Um, let's write actually mock server. Mock server. Go. Stay in the main package. Um, so we need to use the um, HTTP test server again. So we say start server, for example. Um, to provide any parameter, I don't think so. HTTP test, new server, um, hen, fun, and la fun. So then we need to come up with a function, um, so which takes as input a response writer. Thank you, Gokland. Um, response. Right, uh, and are <coughs> pointer to a um, request. Brackets. Cool. What do we return anything? Uh, hang on. Do we return? How did we do it before? I don't know the signature by heart. There you go. New server. Cool. That's it. So no response there. Um, opening parentheses. Cool. And we're good to go. So now we could, for example, have um, the invocation of the mock um, somewhere here. Probably it's easier if we do that in the, let's rewrite into a test method entirely, test um, HTTP mock 
provide a reference to test already. Test and T is no point having it separated. Um, so we, we need to get a reference to the mock in the first place. So um, first of all, mock controller equals um, mock go mock sorry new controller and we need to inject the T so we have a reference to the test that we're running uh, yeah, reference that's a good point and we're basically just creating a mock again um, and this would need to be a um, what did we call this thing our interface um, server <laughs> You mock server and we inject the controller um, HTTP controller yep so then uh, probably got this one wrong again Just picking up stuff from everywhere uh, github.com go along with mock That's definitely wrong. Not mock actually. Mock control. Uh, new controller, we did this one, mock oh. How did I do it before? Ah, and, uh, I forgot the finishing as well. New mock server, that's all we need. We need to have a defer uh, mock control finish. Cool. So now we have this mock we know the interface and then we can specify basically the expectations so we can say mock um, still doesn't get the reference right mm -hmm. new mock server Probably delete all that stuff here. Um, cool. So, cool, that works better. Uh, now we can def define the expectations and um, so on. So, I probably. Um, since I'm running over time here again. So shall I give you 10 minutes break and we'll continue from here?